your flows are gonna fail. And that's fine, we all go through it, but you need to be notified before your users find out. We're gonna show you how to handle errors for you and for larger teams so the right person gets notified without getting a giant mess of emails. I have a flow here, so when a new instructor is hired, I have a bunch of steps that start the onboarding process. It doesn't really matter the details, the point is all three of these could fail. To catch all of their errors, what we want to do is wrap this entire thing in an action, in an action called a scope. Now I like to name these a short summary of what all the steps inside of it are. So in this case, onboard new hire, and then I'm going to take all these steps and move them inside. Next, I need another scope. So if anything inside of here fails, we get the message. So I'm gonna add an action called scope again, and I'm gonna name it handle errors. And I'm gonna add a compose action. You don't need to do this step just because I wanna show you something. If I add compose, in this case, I know that my scope is called scope underscore onboard new hire. Each underscore is a space. And one more key step for all this to work is if we open up settings and we open up the run after, we don't want it on is successful. We want it on has failed or has timed out. If I copy and paste this URL into another window, I can see previous flow runs. So I'm gonna open a previous one that I know failed and I'm gonna rerun this just so you can see the results. And if I take all of the contents from here and just throw it into Visual Studio Code, I get this nice JSON that says status equals failed and then error.message, the provided host name could not be resolved. Well, obviously, 2Ms is not a real URL. But if we keep scrolling, we see that my compose never got reached and the status is skipped. So we don't wanna show this one. We wanna filter down to only this one where the status is failed. To do the filter, we're gonna use the filter action. So if we come over here and I'm gonna do plus add an action and type in filter, select it, and then the source is going to be from the previous compose. So we can simply copy that and paste that into the from, and then we want to select the item status field. So if we just type in item status, and then all we need to do is make it so it is equal to the word failed. It could also time out. So if we click on edit in advanced mode, let's select all of this, plop it back into Visual Studio and do or, let's also do timed out. The final expression looks like that. Let's copy it and then paste it into our expression here, calling this failed actions. And then let's delete this previous compose because it's of no use. And then let's rerun it. And if we open that up, we see that we only have the items we care about that are failing. We know what actions are failing, but let's also find the exact URL link so that way a developer can just pop in the URL and find the exact run of the flow that failed. To do that, we have some helpful functions. I'm gonna come in here, add a compose. You don't have to do this step, this is just to show what's in here. If I go into here and select the expression, there's an expression called workflow. So if I select that one and then add it here and save, rerunning this is gonna give us a lot of interesting information about our flow. If we open this, we're gonna see that there's just a treasure of insights, such as here is our flow name, for instance. Here's our environment name. I'm gonna select that one. And then here is our run name and you're gonna see these as something very familiar you may have seen before. If we look at our URL up here, I'm gonna paste that into here. Look, our run name is just that. And then let's see if our environment name appears later. And yeah, there it 
is. So we can use these properties to build the URL so we can easily find this failed flow run. If I hop back into here and do a really long expression like this, here's the expression. You can literally copy it verbatim, paste it into your environment, and it'll work. I put this in the description, and I'm going to call this flow run URL. And if I rerun it, and let's open that up, we have our URL. Perfect. And we know which actions are failing. Let's go notify the right people. I prefer not to send emails. And on the development teams I've been in, if one flow fails a ton, everyone's going to be blasted with emails. On the dev teams I've ran, we've always used two channels. One is called errors from flows. And another was production errors from flows. And this is the one everyone subscribes to. So all our dev and UAT errors go here and all the critical ones here. The action we're going to use here for this is called post a message in a chat or channel, create your connection, and let's select channel. And here, let's select our team. And then let's select our errors from flows channel. And here, you can name it whatever you want. In this case, error reported in flow. And then I like to toggle the code view. And in here, we can put an href. And inside of it, the link is going to be our compose flow run URL. And I'm going to put the name of the flow, which is start onboarding process and then closing a tag. And then I also like to give it a little pizzazz. So I'm going to style it up and add a little inline CSS that says font style equals italic. You don't have to add that unless you're fun. And then I'm going to add a break for a new line. And then in here, let's go just dump out our whole failed actions, click save, and let's rerun this to see what we're dealing with. If we open up our Teams channel here, now we get this message in our Teams, and then here is our URL link, which takes us nicely to the exact failed flow, so we don't have to look for it. Now let's back it up. Obviously, we can make this prettier, but no matter how pretty we make this, developers are going to ignore it. Because whose responsibility is this? It's the reason why in CPR, you have to point to someone and say, call 911 instead of saying, call 911. This for each isn't necessary. We're going to get rid of it in a second. But first, let's tag people. If we select get app mention token for a user, and then we just have to type in their name, we just put in their e email here. And then inside of here, we can put new line. Do a line break and said, please look into it. And then let's select their app mention here. Click save. And let's move this out of the loop and then delete this because we're going to change this up in a, in a second. But are you noticing that this is getting kind of long and almost all of our main flows should have this error handling. So are we going to repeat this in all of our flows? No, one flow should do all of the error handling and all of our other flows should just be using that one flow. So let's back it up. I'm going to come in here and then let's click into solutions. And I hope you made your flow in a solution to begin with. If you didn't make your flow in a solution, come up here into new solution and make one. Check out my deployments video if you need more information about what a solution is. I'm going to go into one of my existing ones, and I'm going to add my existing flow that's right here. And I'm going to make a brand new flow, and I'm going to call it Air Handler Notifier. I'm going to select Manual Trigger and click Create. Here's our new flow, and then here are some of the steps from the previous flow. So in this one, what information do we want to pass into this flow? The first one is, what is the flow name, the name of the flow that just failed? So I'm going to ask it, what is your flow called? And if this isn't making sense, just follow me for a second, it will. Let's also put person to notify. Who should we notify? What is the URL to this flow? And of course, our flow message. We can't save this for now. We need to add something else to it. So I'm just going to put a compose just so we can make this saveable. I'm just going to write the word test. Click save. All right, let's start moving code. So I don't need this compose anymore. 
and I'm going to copy this action and then click plus and paste it into here. And I'm not going to copy the failed actions because that's still the responsibility of the other flow to figure out what the error is. But I will take this token mention token because again, our error handler is going to do all of the team stuff. And then let's snag that and then copy it into here. And we're going to fix all this in a second. First, we don't need this because our flow URL is passed into here. And then get at mention, we can get it dynamically from the person to notify. And let's do one more called environment ID. You could also figure this out from the flow URL, but let's just keep it simple. All right, now let's make sure we're even sending it to the right channel. So if we open this up, right now we have channel, but we can enter a custom value and dynamically choose which one. So if I sit here and type in errors from flows, and I click save, and I'm going to get rid of this outputs because I know it's going to crash. And then and then watch this. If I go into here and we could start deleting all these actions from our original flow because we're going to use a different action called child flow and select run a child flow, pick our flow, error handler notifier. It's going to ask for things. Well, here's the name of the flow. Who do we want to notify? Just put someone's email. What is the link to the flow we're on? Well, that's just this compose here. For flow message, I'm going to hit this expression. I'm going to type in string because I need to turn that filter action into just text. And then inside of dynamic content, let's do just body, click add. And then I'll, we know how to get the environment ID. It's the same thing as from here where if we select the function expression and then type in workflow tags environment name, click add, hit save. Oh, and I always forget this step. We need to add a response action. And there's one more step. It's just a child flow thing. Run only users means whoever's using your flow, all of your connections, emails, whatever, run it under their credentials, so their permissions. But with child flows, you can't do that. You have to pick who it's going to run under, which is good. You usually want to run it under system admin or whoever has the most permissions. Save that, and then now I should be able to save it. If I go into my flow run here, I see that my notifier is failing. I'll explain what that is. Right here, and this is baffling, I typed in errors from flows. So if we look here at the code view, code that's running in the background says error reported and flow, blah, blah, blah. I know I made all this. And then channel ID errors from flows, that looks right. No, 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 no. This is supposed to be a GUID, a unique ID. I'll show you what I'm talking about. If I go here and I exit this and I select add channel from the dropdown, Errors from flows is what it shows me here. But if I look in the code view, my channel ID is this gobbledygook. And then if I switch it up and then go to production errors and then look at the code view, the gobbledygook changed just a little bit. So what we can do is we can copy this channel GUID or ID and we're going to create a new compose where we're just going to store our production channels ID and then our general errors channel ID. So I'm calling the first one production teams channel and let's call the other one general errors teams channel. You're going to have to open the teams action again to snag the channel ID for the other channel. Now I've added one more compose here, which is the environment ID of the production environment. How did I find that? If you navigate up here to your dev environment, here I have 65DD something. And then if I switch environments, this changed as well. Now, again, I don't recommend you using this hard-coded GUID because it's a little confusing. 
I think it's best to use environment variables and then put in the URL of your production dev environment. But for this example, let's stick with it. And then let's go down here and post message. And instead of channel, we're going to add a custom value and we're going to use an expression. So in here, you do if the environment ID that's passed into the child flow is equal to the production environment ID that we pasted in earlier. Well, if it's the production one, then send it to the production team's channel ID. However, if it's not the production environment, then send it to the general team's channel. And if we look into our team's channel, it looks fine, except again, our error message is hideous. So let's convert it into a nice table. We can select the action convert HTML table. And inside of it, we have to first put our flow message into JSON because it won't accept just text string. And then next, we select the columns as custom because we're going to cite our columns. Let's call the first one action. And then the value, what's, what's the name of the action? If we look into it, this is an example item. And first, we have to pick item name. And then we have to pick our message. If we open that up, we our message is under the error node. So we have to do item, error, and then message. If you use a lot of HTTP actions, sometimes the error message won't be under the error.message, so you, it'll be under output body error and then message. So I like to do the concat expression, so concat just combines two texts together. So in this case, no matter where the error appears in either of them, it's going to be shown here. And then the last step is just hop into our team's message, and then we want to put in the flow URL because that was missing. We also want to output the flow name. And then we want to, underneath that, put our HTML table that we just made. And then the last step is obviously let's go tag the person that needs to be notified. And then if we run this again, and now I'm going to hop into my onboarding process flow, not the child flow, because this one's going to call it. And then this one failed. I already heard a ding. We hop into here. Workflow mentioned you. Errors from flows. And awesome. I get this nice table of the action, exactly what went wrong. And then if I want to dive deeper into it, I can click it and then go investigate and see, oh, it's, it's this guy that's failing. And what I've usually had dev teams do is put a thumbs up to say that they've seen the issue and then a heart if they've resolved it, or they can just come up here and click reply and just let us know what's happening. And if you don't see an emoji here, it's convenient for you because you can go track down to who needs to take care of it and what's not getting done. Because what's the point of reporting all your errors if no one's taking care of it? Thank you for watching and big thanks to Reza Durrani who originally had a great video laying the groundwork for this on error handling. If you want to work on bigger projects and use best practices like this to manage larger enterprise power platform tools, check out my video on solutions and deployments. It's playing next.